we have all heard probably by now that this story going around about how there are 14 cities in the United States that are looking to ban meat. You may have seen Dr. Sean Baker talk about this briefly a few days ago. The story is making a lot of waves, and the article that is most often getting cited here is coming from an ideological source, redstate.com. And, of course, they want to make their partisan, you know, score some partisan points off of it, and that's fine. That's up to them. I'm not going to critique the ideology behind it, at least, you know, on their side. I want to actually look at the source material. So I found the actual source material, and for much of this video today, we're going to leave this image on your screen here. The, uh, this image here is the actual plan for reducing emissions that a lot of cities in the United States and elsewhere have signed on to. And if you look at, at the actual image here, you're going to see that the, there is a dietary changes uh, sort of category here. What they want is, of course, to get people to eat in line with health recommendations and lower in meat, lower meat and dairy consumption. They want people to reduce household waste and reduce supply chain waste. And those last two, I think, I can get behind. Reducing household waste and reducing supply chain waste is a great idea. And the easiest way to reduce supply chain waste is to reduce the length of the supply chain. That means, in simplest language, getting back to eating locally. Getting as much of your food as you can locally. I know, radical thought in this uh, interconnected world we live in, but there is literally no reason why, for in instance, you should be buying canned pears that are grown in South America, packaged in Asia, and sold in the United States when pears are grown in America. And no, I'm not advocating eating fruit on a carnivore diet. I'm making a broader point here that a lot of the, the problems we have in our supply chain are because we have, <laughs> for purely profit reasons, driven the extension of that supply chain to absurd lengths. But it's that first point here that we really should talk about, and that's dietary change. Eat in line with health recommendations and lower meat and dairy consumption. Well, this is, it's an open secret, folks, that they have been pushing, they being the powers that shouldn't be, they have been pushing for people to eat a plant-based diet or a more plant-based diet. We see this with the nonsense of the blue zones. In my town, my small town deep in red state America, there is a nonprofit organization who will remain unnamed here that have gotten the local tribal grocery store to have a blue zone section. They've gotten the local, a local regional chain that is only available like basically in Oklahoma City and play and around surrounding areas to have blue zone aisles. Not like aisles in the store, but like when you go to ch the checkout aisle. When you go out there, there are, instead of all the junk food things, there's what they call healthier options, which are usually seeds, dried fruit, and nuts. They've been very successful at this. And the idea is to eat in line with what they call health recommendations and to get people to eat less meat and reduce dairy consumption. So a lot of the products you'll see in these stores are like I've seen vegan tuna, which is gross sounding. Just think, think about that one and all sorts of other fake meat items. Their health recommendations are based essentially on what we would call the ultra clean version of the standard American diet. Most Americans and most people in the West don't eat as much red meat as we used to. We tend to eat a lot of chicken, and that would be fine, I guess, except, you know, the basic problem with chicken is, aside from the, you know, cleanliness of the conditions the animals are raised in, is there's just not a lot of nutrients in their flesh. Now, some people thrive on chicken, I will fully admit that, and I do enjoy chicken from time to time. But what they want you to do is to replace that stuff with ultra-processed plant-based meat alternatives. And that's the goal here. So they want by the year 2030 to reduce to redu reduce emissions from per consumption of dairy and meat and supply chain issues and other things by 36%. They say that dietary change alone counts for 27% of their goal. Now I want you to think about that for a second. 27% of their emission goals come from meat, reducing meat, reducing dairy consumption and that's that's nuts because we know that meat is not quite carbon neutral, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Once you factor in the supply, you know, moving the animals to processing and then moving the meat around, it's pretty, it's, it, it, you start getting too carbon positive. But when animals are actually raised properly in a regenerative manner, this is not a, they, they don't do anything to the environment. In fact, it, arguably they help clean up the environment. But of course, 
you're not allowed to point that out anymore because this isn't really, I don't think, about you know cleaning up the environment. This is about something else. They hear they want 27% of their emissions goals by 2030 to be cleaned up by getting people to eat less meat. And they don't really tell you what that means per se. But there's another goal here. They want 60% emission of reductions between 2017 and 2050 total. 2050, 2050. That's about, that's 26 years from now, folks. And they want that to account for 45%. They are convinced that the supply chain and the household waste, and especially consumption of meat and dairy, comes from predominantly that this is like a main driver of our problems. And if they were talking about the supply chain, I would not contest that. What sense does it make to for Americans to buy beef from other countries when we are a major beef producer? Most American beef now is exported, or at least it was a couple of years ago, the last time I looked at these numbers. What, what sense does that make for us to do that? What sense does it make for us to not consume the, the meat that we produce and keep the prices low. But unfortunately that's not where we are. And so what they're, what they are trying to do is to use political measures in their cities to reduce consumption. So yes, they are trying to reduce consumption. It's just not necessarily a total ban, but the, the underlying question I have here, and this is a really, this is a very real question. Where do they believe they get the right as government to dictate this to people? I mean, if you look at this stuff, I mean, all this stuff here, I mean, it's not just that, but I mean, like they want to reduce the number of new clothing items you buy every year. What gives them the right to do that? I mean, think about it. The one number I saw was that they want to limit you to buying three new clothing items a year. That's nuts, folks. That's, that's, that's nuts. It's lunacy. What gives them the right to tell you that you, to reduce the number of flights you might take a year? If you are a business person, you may have to fly a lot. If you've got family far away and you are a person of relative means, you might take several flights a year. What right do they have to, do, to tell you that? And all sorts of other things. I mean, they even want to reduce car ownership. This is where their smart cities come in. They're 15 minute cities, which sounds like living in a, you know, a, an ant farm to me, right? Where do they get the right? What gives them this right to make such decisions for everyone else? I, I don't know the answer to that question for you, but this, I was very familiar with this stuff when I lived in one of those 14 cities. I was lived in the city of Portland, Oregon, and I studied sustainable development. I got my PhD in policy related to sustainable development. So I'm very familiar with this stuff. I'm very familiar with this thinking. And this thinking essentially comes down to that government is your friend and can do no wrong. And even those of you who aren't hostile to government and government action should understand that government is always, isn't always on the right side of things. Oftentimes that they are not on the right side of things. And this is not an ideological thing. I can point out to times the policies from either political party in America that were correct or incorrect. It doesn't matter. This is not an ideological thing. This is a simple fact of the matter that do you, where I have to ask you the basic question, do you want the state telling you to using political measures to reduce the amount of meat you you are able to consume, the amount of clothing you're able to buy, or how many flights per year you're willing to take. Seems nuts to me, folks, but then again, I'm just a simple guy trying to, uh, you know, live my best life and have the healthiest life that I can for my, me and my family here in central Oklahoma. Curious though, what do you think about this? A little, a little bit of clarity there looking at the numbers. Are you, uh, Worried that they're going to try to ban meat in your city, or do you think this is all a big hullabaloo that the political tides are very clearly changing in the country anyway, so it doesn't that they're not going to get their opportunity? Let me know what you think about this in the comments. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to sharing that on social media, it helps too. I'm Anthony Stein, The Practical Carnivore. Thanks for tuning in.